It is definitely beyond sunrise, but when you are in an area like this, watching the morning light as it comes across the desert is just magic. Oh, the creosote glows like it's like it's made of gold. It's so beautiful. And then there's all these wonderful little highlights of grass. Oh, it is just an experience to behold. Morning in the New Mexico desert. That is Turtleback Mountain in the distance there. A different view today. something a little different so this is my work face Ta -da! and I have prepped if you saw in the sped up version of me setting this up you'll see that I wet my palette so this is a disposable palette with sponges the polypropylene which is the material underneath and this is polypropylene and my sponges and I have my paints all set up I did pull these guys out um, these are basic acrylics, and the chances of them doing a really good job, meh. But um, as far as blending with them, I might be able to get a few different colors having these available to me. Um, I really love mixing my own greens, but the uh, y this yellow is very lemon. This primary yellow has a little bit um, more of a boldness to it, so I might be able to get a different color orange or green out of it. Um, <clears throat> and you know same with the black when creating browns and different grays things like that occasionally I've been noticing I'm, I've been kind of limited in what I've been able to achieve so far so having a little bit of black in the mix is gonna change things so all right I have been going through my sketchbook and trying to decide um, what image I want to paint and I did some really cool, like, Turtleback Mountain at sunrise. Just a lovely silhouette, right? This is the Road to Monticello. This is actually a commission I'm working on. Uh, and then this is Flat Top from Hot Springs Landing. And then this is Flat Top from where I was parked um, uh, when I first got to town. I parked up above this area. Just kind of wanted to thumb through here. You know, I feel like I've been... I, I haven't, I've, I wanted to do stuff on this yesterday. It turned into a really windy cold day and I had to move around a bit to try to find a good spot. Uh, so I wasn't able to work on it. I'm putting it on hold for now. I want to do something new for myself. And this morning I was going through some images. I also redrew this guy. Um, and I've gotten to work on the sky a little bit. And that's kind of what I got going on in the moment. So this morning I found on my phone some other images. I like this one and download this and one. And I'm downloading onto the laptop so I can work offline as well. And marking these as favorites because then I know they are images that are either ones I would like to use in the book. Oh, I really like this composition. And making it bigger for the canvas is going to be kind of cool. It'll be kind of cool. It'd be nice to do a big turtle back mountain it was yesterday evening. Man, not as exciting though. This was down by the river. There were a couple. Wait, what, did, what was up with that shot? And I didn't stop for. This has got the color in the foreground. And I can always eliminate those branches. This is what I get for not bringing my reading glasses in. Oftentimes, I will pre-draw with just my finger to start that muscle memory. And then almost the whole thing is cloud. And now to resize the image, to check perspective, and kind of eyeball it up against the canvas to give myself 
the concept of size and distance. And then I'll pre-draw with a pencil. Just lightly sketch it in. And you see it just gives me enough detail to know where to go and how to start coloring in. And now I'm preparing my palette and mixing my paints. I'm going to start with that deep, dark purple. That purple is my underlying shadow color. Um, I like it instead of using a black. It gives me a little bit more variation because I can redden the purple or blue the purple in order to create the light that I desire. And I like also the fact that then it gives me different levels of depth. So I'm starting just to give myself an idea of where those <laughs> foreground shadows will be. It just helps me when I go to work in the sky. And I tend to work in layers. So, and I am still at this point um, working with these acrylics as if they're watercolor or gouache. I can't seem to get that out of my brain, but it seems to be working for me, so I'm not going to argue with it. And now I'm putting in my horizon line, right? You know, just another way to visually get myself situated with the painting. Starting with just those basic outlines and adding some blue to create more depth. And the more color I can add to this bottom layer, the better. As far as I'm concerned, it helps to build the color that goes on top. Then that way, nothing really looks solid and you feel movement of light in the distance. I could just have painted, you know, straight, really purpley mountains and been done with it. But you'll see after I finish working on this sky that I end up having to redo that mountain line anyway. So what you're watching me do here is again layer in that color and I, I wanted a gradient. So see that's what I'm talking about right? I just went right over the top of that mountain. But that's also because I want that mountain line to glow right? So here I am building the light. Doing this a little differently uh, than you'll see me do in the future I'm just slowly getting it in there and because I'm blending on the canvas is what you're seeing me do here by using the colors the blue I blended I mixed the blue and I mixed the pink and then I used the white to create a blending of light because it was you know, this was the end of the day. The sun had set. This is the sky. This is what happens to the light at the end of the day and those wonderful pinky blues that emerge, right? And there's just going to be that teeny tiny bit of light in the clouds that's left over at the end of the evening. Oh, it takes some time to build this. I will say I spent probably a good 45 minutes building that sky. And now redrawing my mountain line. And having that paint underneath, as you can see. See how much depth it adds to the to the tops of those mountains. It makes the bottoms really dark, right? And here comes flat top. I am obsessed with this black mesa that is across the lake. I want to go to it so badly. You have no idea. <laughs> I feel like I should be playing the Close Encounters theme behind all of this because this that's how I feel about this mountain. I am just drawn to it. Or Mesa, excuse me. Incredible. I <laughs> So here I am beginning the building of this cloud. And this cloud, I admit, I went 
too far to a certain, I got it got too low. I was just struggling to get that bottom line to um, work the way I wanted it to. And again, it's because when I work in gouache, I'm so accustomed to my darks getting lighter and my lights getting darker. And in acrylic, they don't really vary that much in the dry time. And so a lot of the dark that I was putting in, I thought was going to get lighter and then it didn't. So I had to go back in and add more light, right? And, and vice versa as it went on. Um, yeah, you can see, I just can't stop myself. I just can't stop. But one of the things I am doing well in this process is learning, learning about, well, you know, it is wonderful to have this much color in a cloud because this is the kind of light, right? It's evening. You pretty much see it all. Many of these clouds always just appeared pregnant with rain. And I think I just had that on my brain because I definitely made this cloud look pregnant. <laughs> and here I go again, adding more light. I just couldn't stop. <laughs> but I will say the end result I did end up being pleased with. And all of this light and all of this pigment that I put down did in the end help create the depth that I was looking for. Well, good morning, everybody. It is the next day and the check cleared. Woohoo! I placed my order with Dick Blake. I have a shipment coming on the 3rd, which is Thursday. Which is plenty of time because I can't get started on any of the with any of those things until, you know, I'm finished with what I've got here anyway. And this is all going to keep me busy until those things come and I'm so excited. And I, oh, I should have ordered more gesso maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. I think I'm okay on gesso and varnish. If I need it, I got time. I'm putting this down. So today I'm working on this painting, which I don't know. I think I might have inserted a TikTok in here somewhere. But this is what I'm working on. I'm just going to turn the camera around. And you got a little glimpse of the space I'm in. So that's the painting. I'm going to be adjusting shadows in here today in the water. But I'm going to be leaving that background alone. That background is finished. So then I'm going to be adding creosote in here. And there's going to be giant foliage. Or foliage. Yes, foliage. But creosote and a dead mesquite and just all sorts of cool shrub and, and brush in throughout here. So I'm really excited. And then I'm going to put like stones and pebbles in the foreground on the sand and just, mm -hmm. I'm, yay. This is so much fun. I'm enjoying exploring with these heavy body acrylics. And now that I've started using a blending medium with them, I'm starting to get them to move in a way that feels a little bit more familiar. And I finally got the cloud to do what I wanted it to do yesterday, right? And I, I started looking at it and I was like, I know there's a way. And what's beautiful is, is that I was able to allow the old cloud to really be underpainting. I also didn't like how low the cloud was to the top of the mountains in the distance. They were too close. Because um, I do want the opportunity to throw in some more tiny little distant clouds on this. And I might do that. I have some tiny brushes that I might do that with. So, right? All right, now I'm going to get to work. I'm going to turn this on a time lapse, which means I won't be talking and I'll probably do a voiceover or play music or something. But here we go. Here I'm just wetting my palette again to be sure that it's all set and laying out my colors. And I'm separating them by greens and pinks. That's what was going on there. Here I'm laying in the shadows, the details, in the distance, in that mid-ground, right? So you've got a tiny bit more detail that you can see, uh, but it's still in the distance. And now I'm creating some depth here, throwing in the greens that are 
getting closer to me. Everybody's getting a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger as I come forward. And now creating some underpainting for what is to come. Now, a lot of artists will do their entire canvas in one wash of sorts, and I am starting to work more in that direction. But like I said, I have been treating this like watercolor or gouache, and in that, you leave your whites blank, right? So I know that I want what's going in there light poppy feel to it and I want that color to feel somewhat translucent. So it's the end of the day, it's way later than I ever tend to stop working, but I got on a kick. So I'll show you what happened to the painting I showed you this morning, which is Flat Top from Hot Springs Landing. Ta-da! So the foreground is coming along. I have the awesome like leafless mesquite and creosote and brush and Yum, and yeah, so I'm very excited about that. And ta-da, then there's this one. I think it's finished. It is finished. I'm going to say it's definitely finished. I'm not going to do any more on this. This is Flat Top from Elephant, I, from The Elephant, and I'm not sure how I'm going to name this one yet, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see. I'm just really excited about how it looks. So pop fun. And I mean I went in and I only use palette knife except on the water. Because I really want that wanted that almost glassy look to the water. And I kinda got it. I love it. So yeah, and I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I might decide to do something more to the water, but I think I'm I, I'm finished. I'm finished. Unless someone gives me a tip and it's coming from a very wise place. Um, yeah, so that's that one. And then the other, the hot springs landing, I'm just excited because it's so cool. I'm really pleased with it. So start to finish, I'm having much more of a clue as to how to work with this heavy body to krill. It's just so exciting. And I did a lot of scraping in this one. I think you can see a lot of scraping because there it's brush, right? And I can't draw all those twigs. So I decided to use a little technique that I learned from another artist who works in oils, David Dunlop. You've all heard me mention him before. He uses what's called a reductive painting technique. So that is, you lay your light down and you build everything up and then you remove the paint to reveal the light. Kind of what I've done here, except I'm revealing shadow <laughs> instead of light. But it's still the same concept. And uh, I'm really liking how it's looking and coming out. So we'll have to wait and see. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. And if you would like to keep me full of art supplies so I can continue to paint in acrylics, they are a little bit more expensive and they do go more quickly than gouache. So I do appreciate the contributions. My Patreon is below. I have a PayPal and a Venmo and Ko-Fi and all sorts of stuff. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.